um, happy Tuesday. It's a brand new week, brand new possibilities. Um, I'm just coming to you all with another fireside chat without the fire. Um, today I already know what I'm talking about. I want to talk about that uh, situation that they did with the little girl. They had this, uh, it was on the news. So you don't have to go to the comedy. You don't have to go to the Comedy Central. Or you don't have to uh, watch the Comedy Channel or anything to get comedy. <laughs> <laughs> you can just watch the news. Always something going on in the news. But let me tell you what happened. The poor little girl. This happened in October. The little girl playing on the playground with her friends, and then some grown adult is instigating for the girl to get for to tell these other little kids to beat the little girl up. Some grown woman instigating, telling them little kids to beat the other, the little girl up. <laughs> so the poor little girl, she got <laughs> the poor little girl got beat up. She ended up in the hospital with head injuries and a broken arm. The thing that's funny that made this Comedy Central material is the fact that the anti-bullying people, the people that teach anti-bullying, they came in and that's why it's in the news because it was two days ago. They went ahead. Well, it was in the news yesterday, I think it was. Well, I guess that would have been two days ago because it's just after midnight on Tuesday and it was in the news on Sunday. But it doesn't matter. It was just a few days ago. That's why I'm uh, been in, uh, <coughs> inclined to write this little, to make this little video because uh, the anti-bullying people, the people that teach anti-bullying, Gave the girl a bravery award. They gave her a, a award and a reward. The award was for bravery. <laughs> and, of course, the reward was, you know, they replaced the skateboard and all that kind of stuff. But, I'm, you know, like, I'm just saying. I just think it's a good idea to give the girl some accolades. Go ahead, tell her she's been a good trooper. Tell her she, she persevered well for, you know, all the treatment and the rehab and stuff that go along with the broken arm and all that kind of stuff. So she needs to get the accolades and then they pump her up to, you know, she's staying in good spirits. I mean, she's a whole lot of good stuff. But what you don't do is give the girl a certificate for ba bravery, for being courageous. You don't do that. Why? Because now the little girl, you know, first of all, she's 11 years old. She's on the playground doing all that. And then you got these people out here that don't know how to act and they're beating up and stuff. And so now when she get beat up, is an adult, and see, that's why we like talk out two sides of our mouths in America. It seems like right now, as a child, when she get beat up, <laughs> she get she get an award and a reward. And then when she become an adult, when she dating as a teenager, and when she become an adult, and they start smacking her around, <laughs> they gonna wanna hide her. You know, hide her and her kids if you got kids. You know, and all kind of. Thing. So, no, 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 that's not what you do. You go ahead, you give the girl the accolades and the kudos for all the good stuff she's doing and, 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 and persevering and overcoming and being a trooper and all that. But then you also go ahead and you find somebody that's interested. You put out to put the word out. You use all their resources and, and, and stuff and find somebody that's willing to teach the girl. Give the girl some self-defense classes. And, you know, uh, and it don't have to be like a lifetime at this point. I mean, it's just like, a, you know, a couple weeks, a month, you know, whatever they're willing to donate their time and get a little girl. And you can get a couple people to do that. You get some stuff from this martial artist. You get some stuff from another martial artist or whatever, whatever. But teach the girl some self-defense. That's what you give the girl. You don't give her a certificate and tell her how brave she is just because the girl, the, the girl done beat her up on the playground. And, I mean, you got teachers out here that go out here, they go to school, and they get paid to teach. And they don't want to get beat up <laughs> for teaching somebody something. So just because the little girl and taught the people that, to, you know, be the campaign, the poster child for anti-bullying, that don't mean she should be getting, she should get awarded for it. So now what's going to happen when she, when she bigger and them, them, them teenagers and them grown men are beating on her, when she get up to come up for air, she going to be looking around for a award or a certificate because she got beat up. And so... No, I think you go ahead, you go ahead, let that girl get, 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 get the accolades and the kudos for, you know, perseverance through it all and being a trooper. And, and, but then also you teach her how to defend herself next time. And then that skateboard, <laughs> they hit her with the skateboard. I guess they must have broken it or something. And anyway, she had to get a new one. So that was the award, or the reward they gave her. You know, they replaced the skateboard. But you teach that girl how to weaponize. <laughs> 
Weaponize that skateboard. Because when these kids come at you again, and they will, that's what kids they do. They they beat you up one time, they see you an easy target, and that now you're their new mark. You're their new you're you're their new uh activity on the playground. <laughs> So anyway, so what you do is go ahead and teach that girl how to deal with them people when they start uh, looking like they want to uh, be jumping on her. So you you let her smack them around with that with that skateboard. She got to pick that thing up and use it as a weapon. And then that lady, that grown woman that's across the, the playground instigating all this stuff. See, once them kids laying on the ground all there, because they going home now with bumps, bruises, and uh, broken parts. <laughs> Then you just take that skateboard and you hurl it across the parking lot out of the playground at the grown woman that's out there instigating. Knock a, f <laughs> knock a few of her teeth out. So now she got to go to the dentist and pay big bills to get her mouth fixed. <laughs> But that, that's too. I mean, so that's what I'm saying. Just go ahead and teach the girl that's a let her learn or defend herself. Don't give her uh, kudos and, and certificates for getting beat up. Because like, like I say, them teachers don't even want to get beat up when they even went to school to teach. And when they getting paid to teach. And you know, get back on TikTok the other month. I guess it was like in October. It might have been soon. When we had November, yeah, it was probably October or time frame or so, or early November, that people had a, a challenge out on TikTok <laughs> to slap a teacher. <laughs> them teachers, you know, they got them on the news talking about, you know, they, they, they have all kinds of issues with that. They don't want, they think that's a bad idea, and who comes up with this stuff, and you know, they in arms about that. And they right to be. But you know what trick cracked me up in the news lady, you know, the news people, the journalists, they're all, they're supposed to be <laughs> politically correct. You know, they can't just be saying anything. But one of the black journalists, she was on there, she was like, <laughs> I think if they, <laughs> she said, I think if they slap a teacher, I think you should get to slap them back. <laughs> and I agree with her. If they slap you, you should be able to slap them back. In fact, you can give them a backhand and a front hand. <laughs> but see, some of these kids so big, you if you prepare to slap them back, you better be ready for a, a fight, be a full brawl, because some of these kids are just as big as adults, and they're going to want to fight you back. So you got to be ready to do more than just slap them back, because some of them might put you in a full long brawl. But anyway, so that's enough about that. But you know that that situation with the child, with the playground girl, what they need to do, like back in the day, they used to have these, <laughs> these dunce caps that they used to put on kids when they in classroom and don't know how to act. They had a dunce corner, a dunce cap, and then they sat on a big tall stool. So what they need to do with them kids that beat that little girl up, they need to put a dunce cap on them, and so as long as she got to walk around with that cast on her arm, they got to walk around with the dunce cap. Furthermore, back in the day when they had all the, 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 the quarantines, you know, people had communicable diseases, you can put them big old signs on your door and tell people that it's a quarantine, communicable diseases, and they would even tell you what it is sometimes. Like if it's the, the scarlet fever, polio, uh, typhoid, or whatever they had up there, they put it on a big sign and paste it on your door. Well, you take that same idea and put and take the, the sign, because then them people that got their kids out there and give them their home training and they're out here bullying people, that's a public health issue to me. It's public health, public safety. So you go ahead and post a big sign on their doors so everybody know that a bully lives here. Child with no home training is in this house. <laughs> a bully. So put a big sign up there, let them know. And then back same same idea. Back in the day they used to have with the with the with the uh communicable diseases, the people used to have to walk around with a big big white stick. They just walk around with the stick in front of them so everybody know everybody passing on the street. You can't do it now. I mean, that, that you know, with the with the HIPAA laws and all that kind of stuff, everybody privacy. But you know, back then, you know, they had that big long white stick when you walking down the street and you got a communicable disease, you had to carry your big stick and let everybody know you got a communicable disease. Well, them people with them kids in the house that don't know how to act, they got no home training, you let those grown folks walk around with the big Thick. Let everybody know that they got a dunce at home. So anyway, so the girl, the little girl that's getting a certificate and a reward, she shouldn't be the only one that's having to pay the price for this. And it should, because she don't carry that for the rest of her life. That girl, no matter how long she lives, she gonna be remembering that time when she had to have her arm in a cast, and then she had some head injuries. 
And then again, like I say, they got all this anti-domestic violence stuff that they had on TV. Uh, not on TV, but the whole month celebrating Domestic Violence Month. And now what we're doing is rewarding the kids on the playground for uh. For for allowing them to, for for getting beat up, I, I know they ain't doing nothing for them, not teaching them how to defend themselves the next time. So what you do is next time you get beat up, you're looking for another award and a reward. So no, that's the wrong idea. I just said what I had to say. You let them kids learn how to defend themselves, and then the ones that's doing all the bad stuff, go ahead and put a dunce cap on them. And then the other thing is the Aubrey by <laughs> Aubrey. I didn't mean they didn't go all mod Aubrey. <laughs> I didn't mean they didn't go. But anyway, all my Aubrey case. Once again, you got some more comedy there. Because the man, the, the, I think his name was McMichael. He was the one trying to defend his actions. Defend the defense, indefensible. Defend the indefensible. The man up there talking about, yeah, his, his lessons in the Coast Guard. He was a Coast Guard, apparently, a former Coast Guard person. And he learned in the Coast Guard that displaying a weapon can uh, de-escalate a situation and bring people into compliance. Now, you know that, to me, that's apples and oranges. If you see somebody in a uniform, somebody of authority, coming towards you with a weapon, most likely, yes, you are, you know, that's just right, pretty much uh, the way we're wired, you know, you're, you're taught to, uh, um, Comply, you know, at least let's see what the man has to say. Because, you know, he's in a uniform, and hopefully, now you had a disadvantage and you got hoodwinked if the man need, means something nefarious, then you got caught up because the uniform and the stuff caught you off guard. And some people have gotten caught off like that. People walking around with them sirens on their cars, pulling the women over, and then next thing you know, you got a situation. But yes, a lot of times, when you see the uniform or some form of authority, and you see even what they do with the weapons, holstered or in their hand or whatever, you're feeling okay because they're you know, that person of authority. So what does that have to do when you run around, <laughs> run around in your civilian clothes coming up to somebody with a, with a weapon in your hand and then you expect them to comply? You know, that is just basic biology. When you, if somebody comes toward you, you don't know, you don't know their intentions and they got a weapon in their hand, basic biology says, Fight or flight. So that computer in your head is going to quickly make you discern, determine whether this is the time to run for your life or whether you ain't got time to run, you got to stand up, stand your ground and fight for your life. So either way. So why did man coming up with this Coast Guard uh, comparison and stuff like that to me? And to me, it's just like apples and oranges. You can't compare the two. See, that's, that. that's why he Coast Guard. He got that Mickey Mouse. <laughs> he got that Mickey Mouse rationale. Anyway. Anyway, that's all I had to say. What time you? That's 12 minutes I got to say. Everything I was going to say. Uh, but I guess maybe what? Should I come up with something else to talk about? We got the holidays coming up. I don't know. Uh, I think I was going to come on probably around the holiday. I was going to have a, uh, maybe have a meal on, on video for, for Thanksgiving. But, uh. So, it don't have to always be 20 minutes. I think this is a short one. I have 13 minutes. And I just wanted to say that. What about the little girl? Because I think we doing the wrong thing by, by getting these little girls and teaching them, um, um, you know, to, to accept uh, violence if, you, if, if it's a lesson learned. If people go learn a lesson at your expense, well, it's all well and good. Here's your reward. Here's your reward. Don't do them that. Don't do them like that at all. But anyway, um... Let's see what else I could talk about. <laughs> I just come up some. Let's see what else talk about. The, oh, well, I was thinking about lessons for children and all that other kind of stuff when you're teaching your kids. I think uh, food, clothing, and shelter. Oh, that's what I was thinking about too. I was, I was like, you know, I'm not hoping my kids have any grandkids at all anytime soon especially. But until they figure out their lives and what went down and how to compensate for their tragedy in their young lives, I really hope that they don't go out having kids. But if they do have kids, my advice, because you didn't get your, you weren't able to get guided and counseled and molded by the two people that brought you into this world. So the, maybe the best I can do is try and maybe share some of my uh, knowledge or what I would have think is a good idea for raising kids and stuff like that. Because what I do believe is a lot of people, I think Reggie got food, clothing, and shelter, basically. And, uh... 
<laughs> and the small town USA mentality, something went awry with that because the mom and them wasn't giving him good counsel. But Reggie came up and he came out all right. Like I say, he was a good mold. And all he had to do was leave his mama's ideas behind and, and cleave to his wife if he decided to take on a wife. And he did. First of all, he never should have took on a wife. He should have just went on about his business and figured out what he was going to do and figured out who he was and, and what kind of Mickey Mouse uh, cereal eating. <laughs> somebody that he wanted well uh you know before messing with somebody who had already had a plan for her life and her existence and all that kind of stuff but i don't know why i was talking about that but i was talking oh i was talking about when you're raising your kids you do more than food calls and shelter you got to put stuff in these kids you have to give them tools you have to give them tools to use on the playground when you pay people coming up against them and they don't know how to act you got to give them words to say. You got to give them values and things that need to be instilled in them. Because if you don't, because people, humans, we're at, we're, we're, all, we're our living organisms. We're always in a state of change. And so if you don't put something in those kids, somebody else will. They gonna be getting other stuff that they can get from elsewhere. So you you need to fill those kids up with ideas and 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 beliefs and values and stuff like that. So when they grow up and they go out and they're outside of your you know your little circle of protection, they know how to protect themselves. Um, um, just not just in uh physical protection, but also uh mentally and and being mentally strong and um, psychologically strong and stuff like that because these people will put you to test and so um that's why you go ahead and you give your kids counsel when they're growing up and while they're underneath your roof so that they can have ideas about how they want to deal with situations and stuff like that and the other thing they got going on now is all this stuff they got talking about in the court about that uh what they call it roe versus way you could girls if y'all ain't paying attention y'all better because a lot of, sometimes these kids grow up and they they make a mistake they say oops then they can go and have that abortion down the road but then they take that away a lot of these kids they're going to go out here have these babies that they wasn't planning on having not wanting to have and then they go back to the old days where some of these kids going to go out here and have these illegal um um things these illegal abortions stuff like that but anyway the thing to do is go ahead and put yourself in a position and not let hollywood uh not let Hollywood school you. That's why I'm talking about the stuff that you put in. Because if the parents aren't putting stuff in these kids to teach them about what they should do, how they should do, what you expect of them in certain situations, they're going to get their clues They gonna get their clues from Hollywood. All this stuff that you see on TV. You know, these kids watch these 30-minute shows, these one-hour shows. And I'm telling you, when I was growing up watching TV, TV was a little more wholesome. Well, I'm not going to say a little more. It's a lot more wholesome than it is now. I mean, you don't want to watch the Flintstones and the Jetsons and Lucy and all that. When you saw the bedrooms, they had two beds in those rooms. There was two beds. You ain't see one big, one queen-size bed or full-size bed or whatever, and people sleep in the bed. When you watch, when these kids watch the TV today, they see everything. They they hardly leave anything out about the the making out and the kissing and all the sex and all this other kind of stuff. And to, and what the kids don't realize, if the parents aren't telling them, if is that Hollywood? Those actors and actresses acting and actors. Those actors and actresses acting, they're doing their job. It's not real. When the director says cut, they cut. And then they go have a coconut smile. But see, you all watching this TV, you young kids, you teenagers, you 20-something, 30-something, free single disengaged, you out here watching this stuff and you think that that's your job. That you supposed to, you out here dating and you supposed to be responsible for keeping him happy, satisfying his libido and stuff. It ain't that way. That's dating. That's what the dating process is all about in the first place. Dating is when you go out here and get to know the type of person. How you going to be with a gentleman? How a gentleman's going to be with you? What kind of man you want to be with? What kind of attitude? What kind of expressions? What you want from people that you are spending your time with? That's what dating is all about. It's not all about uh, who else you see. Want to go through his phone and find out who, he, who else he's texting and what he's saying to that person. That's not dating. If you got to be in a relationship and you got to be wondering about what he's looking after and who else he, he, he got his eyes on, then that's not a relationship you want to be in the first place. And the last thing you want to be doing is putting yourself at risk and your posterity. You go out here laying with this man, you end up getting pregnant, now you can't get the abortion and, or, you know, um, whatever options there are out there. It's because sometimes you on birth control, but that's, that fails. 
So you don't want to go out here putting yourself in these positions with somebody you just dating. And I don't even see how people do that in the first place. First of all, you got a lot of dating. And then you date all these people. I think when you get my age, if you slap around with all these people that was cute, that was light, bought a sandwich for you, I think you would you probably forget their names. It's like, oh, I remember, I even remember some of the people. So I don't know. But that's the, not the way you date. You go out, you date, you have a good time, you enjoy the people, they enjoy you. But you don't do all this Hollywood stuff. Because and that's what your parents need to be telling you. They need to teach you to say no, and no means no, and they need to let you know that you're not responsible for satisfying somebody's libido. And then same thing when you when you want to get that ring on your finger, you still gotta have your your boundaries. It ain't like marriage. You're not married yet. Wait till you get married to do all that marital expressions and all that other kind of stuff. Go ahead, enjoy your young life, enjoy your dating scene and all that, but don't get caught up in all that Hollywood drama about how they do these triangles and who the man is seeing and who he texted. Cause, you know, that's not even worth it. not worth your time. It's just, uh, it just uh, what do you call it? That kind of stuff drives you crazy. And what's the fun in dating if you're all tied up in one person already? Especially these people that get all caught up with one person in high school. I mean, you miss out on all the other stuff that, that you could have been doing and having fun with, with other people, you know. <laughs> and if I got I remember was something about Reggie when we were dating, and he was telling me about the relationship. His sister was in for like nine, ten years or something like that. And I was like, mm-mm, I wouldn't be in a relationship like that. No boyfriend, girlfriend. But then all that time, she could have been going out with other people. Somebody she might go out with might like to go horse riding. Somebody might like water sports. Somebody might like, you know, museums and galleries. So if you're going out with the different people, you can have all these different kinds of experiences. But if you're with the one person, <laughs> you can't. And then not only that, you feel responsible, like in such a way that you got to be like his, his, his wife, in other words. <laughs> like concubine kind of situation. You don't want to do that. But anyway, uh, I don't even know why I got started on that. I guess I was just trying to fill the time up. And I think it's just important because these little girls go out here and watch this TV. And this TV, and it makes me mad sometimes watching TV. I'm like, what? What? We watching the show? Good show. What does sex have to do with it at this point? Why? Why did that have to be in there? Why couldn't they just leave that out and continue with whatever else they were doing? Why do they always have to put sexual moments in these shows? And these kids be watching this sometimes, I'm saying. And so, like I said, I say kids don't have a chance. If their parents aren't teaching them at home and filling in those holes, those things that need to be answered, those questions that they might have, if the parents aren't filling up those holes, like I say, living organisms, they're going to fill those holes up, and they're going to be filling those holes up, filling those voids with stuff from TV, stuff from friends, stuff from the boyfriend that's trying to influence you. <laughs> so, no, 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 you talk to those girls, let them know uh, what their boundaries are, let them know how what dating is, and how they... Send them to the dictionary. Let them look up dating. Let them look up fiance. Let them look up concubine. Let them look up. <laughs> let them look up wife. Let them look up whore. Let them look up uh, what the other word? A uh, call girl. Let them look up prostitute. Learn the differences between these things. No, they all got meaning. Don't just use these words throwing them out there like these people giving this girl this award for being curt, being brave. <laughs> Oh, uh, was it brave or courageous? It was something. Either one, it was one of them. But that's not the type of award you need to give, girl. That's not the type of certificate you need to get a girl. Use the correct terminology to express what you try to express for this girl. Because she does not have a responsibility to put herself and get beat up uh, to teach somebody a lesson or to be some anti uh, <laughs> anti-bullying campaign thing. Uh -uh. Don't do it. It happened. And it's unfortunate. So go ahead and give her the tools so she don't have to deal with that again. That don't knock that that's gonna be in the past and then people come at it again, they're gonna have a surprise. They're gonna be the ones going home with both bruises and broken pieces. Not her. Anyway. <laughs> well back to 20 minutes. I'm gonna turn it off because uh, like I say, I wanna make these long. Bye.